Welcome, dear listeners, to Horror Den of Misfits. Story time. The other day, I remember this one little story that happened to one of my friends' old neighbors. His old neighbor lived in a really small RV park. Anyways, he liked to go back there to visit her a lot, since they were pretty close. I was his ride at the time, so I would usually end up hanging out there with him. The small RV park was located right off a main road or highway that led directly into one of our small, historic townships. The park was shaded by mostly tall oak trees, so it was often nice and breezy in the hot summers. Since it was such a small neighborhood in the RV park, everyone had no choice, but to know everyone. While we were hanging out over there one day, my friend's former neighbor and her other neighbor started commenting on the fact that there were tons of ants. That was unusual to them, since they had lived there for years and never had that problem before. Eventually, after dealing with the ants being absolutely everywhere for a couple days, my friend's old neighbor decided to go outside and try to track the ant trails to see where they were maybe coming from. She ended up tracking them to an RV that was one space away from hers. There, she found several trails of them both going into and coming from this man's RV. Everyone in the little neighborhood knew that the man who lived in that RV, was somewhat of a hoarder and he was not clean at all. So, she knocked on his door a few times, but he didn't seem to be there so she decided to tape a note on his door for when he got home. In the note, she asked that he please have his son maybe pick up some ant traps, and also to have him maybe clean up a little. The man who lived there was quite weak and ill with MRSA. I believe MRSA is a disease that can be passed through bodily fluids and such and I also believe it is eventually fatal. Thankfully though, he had his son around to do his errands and some other things to help care for him. A couple days after she'd left the note on his door, she got a knock on her door and it was the man's son. What he had to say was the grossest and most horrifying thing to me. What had happened was that when the man's son came by to take his dad to an appointment, he knocked but didn't get an answer. As he was waiting for his dad to answer, he realized that he hadn't heard from him in almost a week. I guess his dad usually called him at least every other day or so. Since his dad wasn't answering him, his son went to go grab the spare key that his dad had given to him previously. When he let himself into his dad's RV, he made a morbid and terrifying discovery. He found his dad's decomposing body, still in his bed, totally covered in ants. He ran out of there, and it didn't take long for a neighbor to find him sobbing next to his vehicle. Within minutes, the whole small community had heard the gruesome news. As it just so happened, I had taken my friend over there for us all to hang out again on the day his old neighbor had heard the terrible news. We didn't even get a chance to sit down before she was already telling us about it. As she was telling us about all the ants on his body, I just couldn't help but to think about how ants come into your house, crawl all over your sinks, counters and dishes, and even in your food. So, for whatever reason, the ants were truly the most horrific part to me. After all, MRSA can be passed through bodily fluids. We didn't go back there for a while after hearing that. When we did though, they were still in the process of trying to move the RV out of there and that was after a man in a full hazmat suit spent days cleaning it out. The whole thing just kinda freaked us all out though, especially the damn ants, for real. In high school I went camping in Ocala National Forest with some friends. At one point, late at night, a few of us snuck away from the rest of the group. We explored a trail that left us at the edge of a highway. While sitting in what we thought was a secluded area a car drove by and everyone decided to duck down. The car stopped and we heard the doors open, slam shut, and then heavy footsteps were running towards us. We got up and started running back to camp. We could hear the footsteps gaining on the pavement as we entered the forest followed by the crash of large bodies breaking through the underbrush. At one point my buddy Rob stopped short and yelled, banana spider. Suspended before him was a banana spider the size of my hand. She was in the center of a beautiful web. I, on the other hand, remembered that dudes in rural Florida were chasing us. I screamed, not today, mother F and shoved Rob through the spider web and back into camp. In the army, 
During an exercise where we had to dig a pit at night, multiple people saw my buddy in my pit digging when he was definitely not there. He was on piquet out the front of the position. That wouldn't really spook anyone except at one point my section commander saw him standing stationary in the pit at night when he was supposed to be digging. My seco went over to speak to him and said what are you doing? At which point he got out of the pit and sprinted off into the bush without a word, in complete darkness. That is simply not something you do in an army position. There are pits, barbed wire etc everywhere. At the time he was actually on piquet, guard duty, with another soldier. I really love through hiking and climbing, so I sleep outside for a great part of the summer each year, almost never using tents because they are heavy as heck and also prohibited in most parts of my mountains. I've had many scary encounters with animals, mostly due to the inhuman shrieks they can produce, but let me tell you this, in all of nature, nothing is as scary as people. That's why I prefer camping deep in the woods to being just outside of the city limits. It's always better to find a family of wild hogs going through your stuff at 3 a.m. than to find a family of coked out drug addicts going through your stuff at 3 a.m. But anyways, here are two of the stories, of encountering people, that came to my mind. The first one, we were actually using tents because this was more of a get together and drink thing with my classmates at a nearby lake. So the night is surely upon us, and we decide to gather some wood in the nearby forest to keep the fire going through the night. My pal and I take on this task, and as we approach the woods, we see there is another tent pitched right out of sight of our camping site. As we pass it, a dude pops out of the tent. We make small friendly chat about us staying there and him just camping and whatnot, and then we excuse ourselves, saying that we need to get some wood for the fire. All fine and dandy, nothing unusual, Camping folks are usually chatty and friendly. Except for two things, by the setup of the tent and camping ground, he must have been there for a few days and he planned to stay there for a while, which is okay, as there are lots of photographers doing this as the place is famous for its sunrises, although I still shiver thinking about all the heavy tarps lying around. Secondly, he advised us to split as there were two paths going through the woods so that we can cover more ground. Which we did because why not? He looked like he knew the area. So I am walking alone through the woods, my mate taking the other path which was directly above mine, and he could still see down on my trail. When I hear him shout my name, so I turn around to see what's happening, and I see the guy from the tent following me on the trail, which he saw from above, wielding a freaking machete. The guy says that after we left, he realized we didn't have any axe or anything to chop down the wood, although we said we were collecting the wood, also chopping it down would be illegal there, so he thought he would help me with that. Which I politely refused and got the hell out of there, meeting my mate who was already on his route there. So we came back to the camping site with next to no fuel for the fire, and everyone keeps making fun of us, saying that. We are paranoid and the guy surely wanted to help. Whatever, we proceed to drink, and night falls. We almost forgot about the incident, and all is well again, when I see a headlamp approaching our campsite. It is that guy from the tent coming to our site. He is bearing a bunch of wood in his arms, saying that he knew we didn't take much of the fuel so he brought us some. Then he walks all around our camping site before putting it down, I mean, there was really no need for that as the fire was in the middle, checking the tents, asking whether this is all of us and if someone else is coming, not creepy at all. After a moment of uncomfortable silence, he tells us to enjoy our night and gets out. Understandably, everybody is creeped out by now, and different theories pop up, such as that he brought the wood only to make sure that we won't kill the fire before we go to sleep so that he knows when that happens or that the occasional flash from the direction of his campsite is the flash from his binoculars. Well, no one went to sleep that night, and we were not drinking anymore. After the sun went up, we took a two-hour nap, rotating guards, and packed our shit and left as soon as possible. The other one, we were on a climbing trip and slept under the stars really deep in the woods, well off all the known trails and places in the area, as sleeping there is prohibited, and the rangers are very strict about this, issuing very large fines if they catch you, so essentially we were hiding deep in the woods. We cooked some great dinner, man, nothing tastes so good as an MRE after a full day of climbing camped out in the mountains, 
drank some wine, talked shit a bit, and went to sleep as we were really tired. At about 2 am, we are all woken up, there were four of us, by voices, by a shitload of voices. It sounded like a school trip somewhere in the distance, lots of kids talking to each other, presumably walking in a group. That itself was scary as heck, a bunch of kids walking in the woods at 2 am, and they must have been off any trail as we went on purpose out of the reach of any of the known trails. No one is talking, we all sit there and listen. The voices pass. Then the second wave of similar groups of voices passes nearby, and then we hear someone approach our site through the woods. There must be more of them based on the sounds they are making, and then it happened. It was a group of five kids, roughly 13 years old, walking in the direction of the voices. They walk around our site, silently greeting us and nodding in our direction as they pass about three meters from our sleeping bags and continue towards all the voices. To make it all more creepy, none of them had any headlamp or flashlight or any source of light. It was a full moon, so the visibility was good, but still. I have no idea what that was supposed to mean, but it was really weird and honestly scary. It could have been some scouts as that was a well-established outdoorsy place, the whole area, but still, a bunch of kids alone in the woods well off any known trail, walking without any source of light at 2 am, just right by us. There are lots of weird things happening when you camp, but trust me, nothing is as scary as other human beings. I'm not even sure if I'm explaining this right because I don't have the right words but I'm gonna try. I have three kids, and they're pretty active. It was a summer evening in 2020. The boys asked to go outside into the yard so I said yes and they headed into the back. I had to go to the bathroom so I had to walk past my boys room to get there. They had left the dresser light on which was against the wall shared with the bathroom wall. When I walked past the door, something huge flew past the light making a shadow that had wings. Not like bird wings or insects but like those cartoons or drawings of demons where they have like pointy edges in the flaps. It also saw a brief flash of bright red color for a second. It literally scared me so much that I jumped back and hesitated walking by the door, but I heard some toys shift and the dresser being closed. But, there is no one else inside the house. My kids are outside with my husband and I'm alone, or was I, so I thought? So what the hell would make that shadow? I walked into the room and everything was normal looking except my son's Gundams, which are these Japanese build-yourself toys of giant robots that vary in size. The one that normally is up on the shelf, too high for my kids to reach, was down on the dresser away from the other three that are on the shelf above. Now normally I would just assume that my son was fixing it or something but it just didn't add up as I had been inside doing laundry, putting clothes in that same dresser just a few minutes before. My son hadn't been in his room, and my other son could not reach them and would break them if he grabbed them. When I went outside I asked everyone if they had been moving the Gundams or fixing them and instantly my oldest was concerned someone broke it and had to go check, saying he hadn't touched it since we put them on the shelf. Now, when he returned from their room, he was annoyed asking me why I was making stuff up about the Gundams because they're all in their places. I asked about the one on the dresser and he said, no, you put it back just fine, thank you for being gentle. I cannot reach the shelf without a chair or stepladder and neither of those things are in their room, so whatever move that thing made me look crazy or like I was playing some prank. So what was in the room and how was it big enough to cast a shadow that darkened the whole room? Maybe it was just my mind playing tricks on itself. But my dog hasn't gone into the boys room since and both of my boys slept in the living room last night, saying they kept hearing scraping and scratches in the wall behind the dresser. Two things, same trip. Not really the woods, but might as well share. Me and my friends, Mexican graphic design students, went to the Laguna Salada, Salty Lagoon, in Baja California, Mexico, to watch the Milky Way and shoot some star trails photography. The Laguna Salada is a vast patch of salt encrusted land that was once a lake. It dried quite a bit ago, and you can actually find ancient bleached seashells if you check carefully. Anyways, we arrive at an entrance from the highway and drive around 500 meter deep into the Salada. 
We come to a nice spot with a lot of bushes at one side while clear on the other. We thought this was perfect, as the bushes would block out the car headlights from the road. We stop and get out of the car, then we all notice this strange, hissing or rattling sound all around us. Imagine being surrounded by invisible people playing maracas some far, some closer. We are so puzzled and fascinated by the sound that we start to throw out theories about what it could be. A friend says it might be echo from the cars, other says they're insects, and another one, jokingly says alien probes man etc. With that put aside, we set up the tripod, camera, shutter switch, we shoot some test shots and after everything is right, we leave the camera with the lens open to shoot the star trails. We grab some lanterns and decide to go exploring. After walking about 15 minutes, one friend says, in a very fearful voice, two men are coming at us. We are like yeah bro, nice try but he repeats not kidding, two men are coming at us, and they got assault rifles. Almost instantly, the two men yell, turn off the flashlights, turn up the flashlights now and we're all like F he's right, we are scared shitless and do as the men command. They get close and say, don't move, keep your hands down, don't do sudden movements and then they start asking questions in a very aggressive tone, who are you, what are you doing here, how old are you, what are your names, how long have you been here etc. After explaining ourselves, they start whispering shit to themselves while pointing their rifles at us. We are all frozen with fear, believing we were going to be executed right there for being at the wrong place at the wrong time. One of the men say, go back to your car and keep taking your photos, but do not go near that bush patch because, and I quote him, rifles tend to misfire in there. As we are walking away from them, I was pretty sure we stumbled into a bunch of narcos doing some shady shit there. I'm sure we are going to be sprayed from the back, I'm just walking slowly, as our flashlights are off, waiting for that hot lead to enter my back. You know how they say that your life flashes in front of you when you feel you're close to death? I can assure you it's not a lie. Past Christmas come to my mind, me opening my sweet Super Nintendo, graduating from high school, past girlfriends, etc. I even start to get angry at life, telling myself I'm going to get killed by a scum narco all because of some photos. Thank God, nothing happened. We get the message and decide to nope the F from there. We decide to haul ass and get the F out before we become another number in Mexico's narco wars. As we are all grabbing our shit and packing up, we hear a loud rattling in the floor, a friend turns a flashlight and turns out it is a baby rattlesnake, inches from my friend's feet in an attack posture, with rattle shaking like crazy and all, ready to strike. We cannot believe how stupid we were, all the sounds we heard in the beginning turned out to be rattlesnakes, all around us. Narcos and rattlesnakes. We noped the F out of there and never came back. Could it have been the Jersey Devil? I was homeless for a few years from 2018 to 2021, and I used to stay in a tent with my ex-boyfriend in the Pine Barrens of New Jersey. I always had to end up moving my tent spot eventually because the cops would find us. Either way I had spent a lot of the time in the woods at night. One night when walking back to my tent, I heard something down the trail a bit. I shined my light in the direction of the sound to be met with glowing eyes reflecting my flashlight. However, where the eyes were made it so whatever I was looking it was taller than me and I'm 5 foot 8 inches. There is no animal that tall in the area. I turn to my ex and tell him to start going to the tent faster. He could tell something was off, so he asked if I was alright. I told him I'll tell him when we get to the tent because I have always been told not to acknowledge such creatures or spirits as it gives them more power. Then some nights there would be smacking on our tent. It would hit all the sides of the tent. We would look out the tent windows and check outside the tent but we would never find anything or hear any footsteps. Another night, during the summer, we decided to go for a small hike at night because it was way more of a tolerable temperature. About 15 minutes into the hike I started feeling paranoid, like I was being watched. About 5 minutes later, I heard a maniacal laugh coming from somewhere in the woods. I couldn't pinpoint which direction though. My ex asked what was that, and I loudly said, I don't know but whatever it is needs to stop. As soon as I said this, multiple maniacal laughs now started. My ex and I turned around and walked back for what felt like the longest 20 minutes. 
Another time I found a severed coyote head with something hung in the tree beside it, that had a tooth in it. And lastly, one time I was with my friend parked on the road far into the woods, so we could smoke. The passenger window was down, which is where I was sitting. The woods were right next to me. Again the feeling of being watched overwhelmed me. Two minutes or so later I heard a hello? And then John? Coming from the woods. I tell my friend to turn around and we need to leave. I didn't tell her why because like I said I don't like to acknowledge these things until I'm far away from them. I am pretty late to the party, but my mother has a great camping story. In their late 20s her and my father were teaching in Lesotho. On the holidays they would go on camping trips in the massive parks in Zimbabwe. They were young and stupid, and didn't know the dangers of camping in Africa, and they had my sister with them, who would have been less than a year old at the time. One night, they were camping in a tent and had my sister between them, when they heard sounds outside. They say it sort of sounded like someone coughing. My sister were making baby noises, and it seemed like it attracted more coughing animals outside. Soon it sounded like a whole pack of something was outside the tent. My parents had no firearms, and no knife or axe close by. One of the animale then start sniffing the tent, and it seems like it was trying to dig under it to get to my, now crying, sister. My panicked parents were trying to find a way to save themselves and my sister, and in a panic-induced rage, my mother, with all the might and glory that only a mother who is scared for her child's life can produce, punches the snout of the hyena sniffing the tent. To this day my parents swear that the animal screamed in terror, and the whole pack ran off. This is a terrifying tale, the story of a Bigfoot war that allegedly took place in eastern Oklahoma through the years. I finally decided to look into the matter, gather as much information as I could, and decide as to whether the tale might have some truth to it or was an outright fabrication. The following is what I was able to find out. It is said that around 1855, Choctaw people, in what is now LaFleur County, Oklahoma, and farmers in what is now Arkansas, were experiencing some terrifying events. It all began in a rather benign way with the theft of vegetables, a few heads of livestock, and other foodstuff by stealthy bandits in the night. The thieves were quiet and never seen. They're also smart as somehow they never ventured into Choctaw encampments on nights when a watchman was in place. Neither did the bandits ever fall into the traps set for them by farmers outside of Indian territory. Those charged with finding and capturing these marauders began to develop a begrudging respect for the willingness of their adversaries as time went by and the petty thefts continued. While the thefts were annoying and did cause some hardships near the Choctaw or neighboring Anglo farmers were afraid. However, Things changed once women and children began to go missing. A group of 30 Choctaw cavalrymen was organized to hunt down the abductors. The group was led by Joshua Lafleur, a man of a mix of Choctaw and French blood who was deeply respected by his fellow tribesmen. Also joining the search party was a warrior named Mashula Tubby and his six sons. They were huge men, all approaching seven feet in height and weighing more than 300 pounds each and were regarded as fierce warriors and expert horsemen. The Tubbies were so effective in mountain warfare that despite their massive size they became known as the Light Horsemen. The contingent of searchers, armed to the teeth, set out into the region known today as the McCurtain County Wilderness Area to search for the kidnappers. After riding all day the searchers finally arrived in the area they believed the bandits to be hiding. Lafleur brought his troops to a halt, stood up in his stirrups, and surveyed the area with a spyglass. It is unclear exactly what Lafleur saw but whatever it was he ordered his men to charge forward toward a stand of pines roughly 500 yards distant. Lafleur and the tubby men led the attack as the troops closed the distance between themselves and the stand of pines where the kidnappers were thought to be hiding. They were assaulted by a tremendous stench, the unmistakable odor of decay and decomposition. The horses of most of the men began to buck and rear tossing the riders. Only the mounts of Lafleur and Tubby men were disciplined enough to remain composed allowing the eight men to continue through the pines. As the men cleared the small wooded patch they came upon a large earthen mound. Scattered across the mound were the bodies of children and women in various stages of decomposition. 
Lafleur and the Tubbies caught a glimpse of a number of the murderers fleeing into the tree line on the opposite side of the mound. Only three of the killers stood their ground to meet the charge of the light horsemen. At this time the cavalrymen realized they were not going up against any human foe. Rather, standing before them, while snarling and beating their chests were three huge hair-covered creatures. Despite what must have been a shocking sight to him Lafleur drew his pistol and saber, spurred his mount, and charged. As Lafleur approached the nearest ape it took a mighty swipe and struck his horse in the head killing it instantly. Lafleur managed to roll off of the fallen horse quickly, jumped to his feet, and fired multiple shots into the chest of the creature. Once his pistol was empty Lafleur attacked the ape with the saber opening up gaping wounds on the animal which roared in rage and pain. Lafleur's assault on the creature was so quick and the shock of seeing hair-covered monsters so great that the tubby men hesitated, completely stupefied before entering the fray. This delay allowed one of the other two apes to get behind Lafleur who was intensely focused on the ape he had engaged. The second beast grabbed Lafleur's head with two huge hands and ripped it from his shoulders. The horrible sight jolted the tubby warriors into action and they opened fire on the three Sasquatches with 50 caliber sharps buffalo rifles two of the beasts were killed instantly, dropping in their tracks. The third creature was wounded but turned and fled before the lethal shot could be fired. Robert Tubby, only 18 years old but already 6 foot 1 inch and well over 300 pounds, spurred his horse ran down the injured ape, and dispatched it with his hunting knife, as the rest of the troop joined them. The light horsemen surveyed the area the bodies of dead women and children, mostly partially devoured, littered the area. The smell of decay along with the terrible odor of the beast's feces caused many of the men to vomit. After composing themselves the men gathered the remains of the unfortunate women and children and buried them. They also buried their leader Joshua Lafleur. As for the three black ape monsters, their bodies were placed upon a huge bonfire and burned. With their hellish task complete the Choctaw warriors returned to Tuscahoma, Oklahoma where it is said even the mighty tubby men were plagued by terrible nightmares for years afterward. Now, was this story true, and were the details fact? According to a Bigfoot researcher named Jim King, the answer might be yes. King believes the LaFleur County story is based on an event that took place much farther west in Kiowa territory. That event was related to him by an Indian elder. According to the story Kiowa women were placed in a special teepee or tent on the edge of camp. When they started their menstrual cycle the women stayed there being tended to only by older women until their cycle was complete. The elder told King that women were considered unclean during their cycles and Kiowa warriors were forbidden any physical contact with the females during this time. They're not even to look upon them. This seems harsh but it's not too different than how many cultures treated menstruating women in the past. The elders said that once long ago there had been trouble with ape-like creatures who were attracted by the scent and pheromones emanating from the tent where the menstruating women were housed. Since the tent was on the edge of the encampment it proved to be an easy target for renegade apes who are said to have entered and carried off women on several occasions. To make a long story short the Kiowa leadership decided this was unacceptable and put together a group of warriors to hunt down the kidnappers. The searchers did manage to track an ape back to its lair and killed not only it, but an entire family unit. Could the LaFleur County story have its roots in the tale told to Jim King by the Kiowa elder? Is there any truth at all, even the smallest of grains in either tale? I've heard many people put their faith in the LaFleur County version simply due to the name of the unfortunate Joshua LaFleur, and they wouldn't have named the county after him if it wasn't true. I have not been able to find anything saying LaFleur County was named after Joshua LaFleur according to the, the Oklahoma Historical Society's website. The name honors the prominent LaFleur family of the Choctaw Nation. Could Joshua LaFleur have been one of the prominent LaFleur family? It is certainly possible but there does not seem to be any documentation singling out Joshua or his actions as the reason for the naming of the county. Growing up in the woods and going camping, my family and I have our fair share of bizarre and scary stories. This one I just can't seem to wrap my head around, even to this day. My parents own 35 acres of property in the deep Rockies, about two to three hours away from our home. We spent as much time as we could camping there, as we all loved it. 
It was secluded and beautiful and we had a lot of freedom there as kids. My parents were both experienced campers and backpackers and had both grown up in the mountains. One day we head up at night, arriving at the property at around 9 or 10 pm. We were all tired and start to unpack the tents and such from the car. The minute we get out though, we all get a strange feeling. It didn't feel normal or good. We had encountered wild predators at this point and knew the feeling of being watched. But this was like being watched from all sides. We also all noticed that there are no sounds. It is dead silent. Normally we would be hearing all of the insects, and occasional owls, night hawks or bats. And just the general hum of a forest. Nothing. We all kind of laughed nervously and maybe mentioned a few things but got to work setting up our tents nearby. This is when the real strange stuff starts to happen. We begin to hear rustling in the branches around us, about 10 feet off the ground, it seems. It almost sounded like large creatures like monkeys or raccoons, jumping from tree to tree loudly. And many of them. I have never ever seen raccoons have the ability to do something like that, and these sounds were clumsy, unlike birds. It gets louder and louder and becomes extremely unnerving. At this point the tent is set up and my parents put my brother and I in there, telling us to stay inside. They go out with flashlights, trying to make sense of this bizarre activity. As they are outside we start to hear these bizarre calls. I have never ever heard anything like this before or since. Honestly it almost sounded like humans mimicking some kind of primate holler or screech. There was an odd human-like aspect to it. And it's like they are calling and responding to each other from every direction, along with the branches cracking and rustling. My parents come back to the tent and tell us they couldn't see anything at all. I remember how shocked and frightened my mom looked, and it scared me because she was a badass that would stalk bears to get a good photo. Both my parents were not easily frightened in nature, or at all. We are all huddled together in the tent, confused, scared and unsure of what to do. The sounds are so loud and everywhere it almost sounds like some crazy storm outside. Our dogs are cowered in between us all, totally freaked out. My dad decides to go out again, and I remember as he finishes unzipping the tent, the sounds stop. Just like that, in an instant. And the oppressive, weird feeling is gone. He and my mom go out again to investigate and again find nothing, except fallen branches and some strange marks up high on some trees. They come back, talk us down and somehow manage to get us to sleep. We still talk about this to this day. None of us know what happened, and have no explanation. Like I said, we had some crazy and strange things happen to us. But never anything remotely similar to what happened that night. I saw a flying manta ray also. It was magical and I rarely talk about it because I don't want anyone to say I'm crazy. It had an electric pulsing blue outline which is the only thing that made it distinguishable from the night sky. Appearing to be swimming but in the sky. It looked as if it swam through a black hole or a time warp or something. It slowly started to disappear as if walking through a door and pieces of its body would be invisible. It was in the fall of 2015 in Great Falls. Montana where Malmstrom Air Force Base is located, above the Missouri River. It was seen between midnight and 3 a.m. but it was well above the height a plane would be flying and was massive. Incredible. It didn't look like it was flying. It looked as if it was underwater swimming based on the way the outline of it moved. It slowly disappeared as if it was going into a portal or something. My encounter was during firearms deer season in the late fall outside of Myersdale, Pennsylvania. My friend and I were hunting on his aunt's property. After we parked we started up a hill that gets very steep. Where the woodbine starts we split up. He goes off to the left and I went all the way to the top of the hill to a deer stand that's in the woods about 40 yards from the field. This was our third day there. As I was climbing up the deer stand I heard a distinct, drawn out whoop. I would estimate 100 yards ahead of me. I decided I didn't want to be a sitting duck in the deer stand so I climbed down and went back into the field where I sat. Once the sun began going down I decided to walk back down the hill. Now inside the woods was pitch black but there was still some light in the field. Once I got to the bottom where the woodbine curves I heard footsteps. 
I looked up and saw a silhouette walking on the other side of the brush where the woodbine curves. I figured it was my friend who decided to walk up to meet up with me since it was getting dark. I said, hey, did you see any deer? And all of a sudden this thing tore into the woods and made its way up the hill. I know this was no person as it was pitch black in the woods and there was so much debris that there was no way a person could move at the speed this thing was. I clearly could make out the bipedal footsteps. My friend came out of the woods about 60 yards away. I saw his light before I saw him. He said he heard someone walking around and also questioned me about the whoop as he thought it was me who did it. It was then that I introduced him to the Bigfoot world and he said I never thought about all the weird stuff I heard up there until you brought it up. Apparently, he has heard things up there before. Needless to say, we didn't go hunting up there again. A few years back, around the end of May, I was taking my dog out a little after midnight and I saw something fly past me. It was a beautiful, glowing blue light that was flashing on and off like a firefly, in the same fashion, getting brighter and then dimming at about the same rate, in the same, organic, gradual beautiful way. It was invisible to me when it wasn't lit up, also like a firefly in the dark. Although it wasn't completely dark, there were street lights and enough environmental light to see everything around me. And instead of being the size of an insect, this was more the size of a bird. It whooshed past me, flying in an organic, imperfect path, and in a hurried way that made me feel strongly that it was some kind of animal, creature or being. It also seemed intelligent somehow, though I can't logically explain why. I had my eyes on it for about 10 seconds straight, so I know I didn't imagine it or mistake something else. It flew right past me and up toward the window where my light was on and I had been working by the window that night. This was an exciting, magical moment for me but I didn't know what to think of it, and pretty much just went about my night and my life. A few nights later, my boyfriend came to stay over, and in the middle of the night, I got up to use the bathroom. From the bathroom window in the dark, I could see a huge, tall tree in the distance, we were on the second floor, that seemed to be full of glowing blue lights that were flashing on and off in that same, firefly pattern. But these were bigger than fireflies. They were blue with a slight green hue mixed in. I called him to the window to look, and we stood watching together and then got back into bed and watched from there for quite a while until we couldn't stay awake anymore. We were both seeing it and we were both in awe and disbelief. This tree was far away, and I very much doubt that anything as small as a firefly would have been so visible or so bright or so big in our field of vision at that distance. They seem to be lighting up in these synchronous patterns. Not all at once but as if in a chain of communication. It would go completely dark at times and then we would see one again, then two then three then ten. There were some flying in the air too, they weren't all in the tree. I never saw these again that spring or summer or since. We are in Middle Tennessee. Not a rural area, but enough space and land around us then that it was a quiet, peaceful place. Have never seen or heard of blue fireflies or anything like that in our area. Wondering if anyone has any thoughts about what these incidents might have been or if anyone has experienced anything similar. On April 9, 2003, the witness said that whatever this creature was it was pure evil. This began when a group of friends decided to go camping and hiking. On the third day of their hike, the witness said they had just started a fire and were cooking dinner when they started to hear something howling off in the distance. He and the rest of the party knew that it wasn't coyotes since these howls were deep and powerful, maybe wolves the witness said. Everyone turned in for the night around 10.30 pm knowing that it was going to be a hard hike the next day. When they were all asleep the witness said that they all were woken by a very loud howl and movement in their camp. All seven of the party came out of the tent at about the same time. Two other members had brought handguns with them just in case they did run into a large animal like a bear or, as it seems, a large canine. They couldn't see anything at first but they could hear something very large moving just out of their sight. The witness says that even though they hadn't seen the creature he and the other members of the party could feel an evil presence. You could feel it in the air and it was really freaking everyone out. It was a heaviness like you get when you walk in on people that are fighting but it stops because they don't want anyone to know. A feeling of hate he thought. 
Everyone else was talking and concerned about the strange feeling. They would hear large stick breaks, but still no sign of the creature. Then came another loud howl which made them jump out of their own skins. At that point, they all were starting to get scared with his two friends having their pistols drawn and ready to fire when one of the group members screamed out saying that she had just seen something huge and it was only on two legs. She was visibly shaking as she was telling what she had just seen. The flashlights were really starting to go to work shining all through the trees. Then from behind them came another loud howl which made the witness chest vibrate he said. Then they could hear it moving once more as if it was hunting them. One of his friends said that this is not good. Everyone needs to get close to the fire and it needs to be built up fast. So they started placing more firewood, eventually giving off a good glow throughout their camp. Now this is when they all say that they saw this creature. The witnesses said it was standing at least seven and a half feet tall with it having a wolf's head. It was silver with white markings while standing on just its hind legs. It was only 20 to 25 feet away from them just staring with greenish yellow glowing eyes, which made their blood run cold. It T stood there for a good 15 to 20 seconds just staring with its arms down by its side. It did look like it had hands but was tipped with long claws that looked to be at least two and a half inches. The torso was human-like through its shoulders and chest area, but its belly looked to be sunken. The legs could be seen only above the knees with bushes covering its lower legs. The witness said that this creature is out there, but he doesn't know if it's a werewolf or what. As this creature was standing there the witness friends had their pistols out, starting to fire at the feet of this creature, causing it to growl and show its long canine teeth. Then the creature bolted off to the left while making a howling noise once again. The sounds of the limbs and twigs breaking were fading as the creature moved off. They didn't hear the creature for the rest of the night. Regardless, after their encounter, none of the parties were going back to sleep. Before I start, sorry this will be a long one. I should just make a separate post but I'll just leave a comment for now. I've started a post on multiple occasions but tell myself halfway through that people would think I'm bullshitting and delete the post. My dad's side of the family is very strict religious in sort of a cult-like manner. Luckily, my dad and aunts came out kinda normal but my grandparents are very weird. Love y'all lamau. My mom's side of the family is the complete opposite. Both her and her dad have always been sensitive to paranormal shit and both have some wild stories. My grandfather is a very wise wizard-like man with a long track record of psychedelic journeying if you will, and I sort of relate all of our experiences to him. Anyway here's some weird shit that has happened to us. I was born in 2004 and have had paranormal experiences throughout my life. In my first house, I mistook a woman in a dress for my older brother. When I told my parents I saw him leave they told me he was already at school and we were the only ones in the house. My younger brother and I would always see red firefly-like dots dance above us while we were laying in bed. Doors would slam and there would always be noise that couldn't be explained. In 2013 we moved into a new house where my parents saw a dark hunched raccoon-like figure on multiple occasions. There was also a motion-activated light in the hallway by my room that would go off by itself around 2 to 3 am on multiple occasions. My sister's room was across the hall and told me that there was a time when she walked past my room and saw me sitting straight up in bed staring right through her eyes. She said she told me to go to sleep and I replied I am sleeping, can you not see that I am sleeping? I never saw the figure that my parents did but one of my older brother's friends saw it crawl up the stairs. F that. We moved again in 2017 into my parents' current house, and this is where we have all had the most intense experiences. First off, their house is in an older neighborhood with a lot of original owners still in their homes. Secondly, the previous owner of the house informed my dad that the next door neighbor hung himself on the back porch a few years prior. Apparently, the man had been hanging there long enough for turkey vultures to be swarming on his body and landing on the neighboring houses. When the body was found, his neck was so stretched that his feet almost reached the ground. This will come into play later. When we first moved into this house, my mom and I would talk about how clean and empty of entities this house felt. This all changed around a year or two after we moved into the house. My sister had her first daughter around this time and lived in an apartment with her boyfriend, now husband. 
My niece started having violent night terrors and would always tell my sister random aspects of another life she lived with all of her old friends. One weekend, my sister came over and dropped my niece off to spend the night. While she was over, she kept telling us that all of her friends were there with us. I personally believe this entity used my niece to get into our house. Call me crazy because I just might be. Anyway, after my niece made that comment, the house never felt the same. It started out innocent and loving. There were multiple times I would feel a warm presence of my late uncle and even felt him put his hand on my shoulder a couple times. After the good however, there was a small leak of darkness that kept flooding the house. Shadows would move out of the corner of my eye, I would have terrifying nightmares, and always smelled a gross fishy smell in the media room. The strangest part is that for a while my mom and I would both feel cycles of good and bad in the house at the same time. I would make a comment about seeing something and she would look me dead in the eyes terrified telling me she saw the same thing. One time in particular, I walked out to the garage to grab a drink and saw a very tall, around 8 feet, slender pitch black figure looking at me behind my mom's car. When I came back in she just saw it on my face and all she said was, I know, they're back, I saw him too. This cycle of clean to evil kept getting stronger and more active in the house. The peak of the darkness happened right at the end of the main COVID lockdown BS. This is when it would visit me in my room at night and F with me all night long. Like clockwork, right around 2 to 3 AM I would experience a crippling feeling of terror and know that it was in the room with me. There would be a visible dark fog like haze that would fill the room like smoke. All outside sounds of bug, animals, or wind would go dead silent. My TV and phone would both disconnect from the Wi-Fi stop working, and I would be left alone with this being. I would hear knocks moving around my room, the floor creaking like footsteps, and my blinds would get pulled and let go to hit and bounce on my windows. On one occasion, I decided to be a man and rolled over to face whatever was in my room. This is probably one of the scariest things that has ever happened to me. When I rolled over, I saw a figure crouching down by my door. Frozen with fear, I kept staring and watched this figure that was even darker than a pitch black room stand up to a terrifying height and stretch its arms and neck straight up in sort of a dominating threatening position. This thing literally reached the ceiling with the tips of its fingers and head. Around 9 feet tall. I got a pretty good look at the thing and could see it was wearing a black hat and trench coat. I told my parents about this in the morning. My mom believed me but my dad always thought we were crazy and tried to play everything off as us experiencing sleep paralysis or just being crazy. Fast forward to 2022 my parents. Had some friends in town staying at the house. I came downstairs one night while they were hanging out on the couch and my dad called me over. I could tell that they were all sort of on edge and my dad's friend described to me the same thing I saw but walking across the second floor balcony. Fast forward again to January of this year, I had a buddy over and we both took LSD the first time. We were hanging out in the media room, where I used to get that weird fishy smell, and also the closest room in the house to the neighbor that hung himself. When we were both peeking in our own worlds listening to music, he said he opened his eyes and saw and described the exact same figure. Stretched arms and neck, hat and trench coat. The crazy thing is that he didn't bring it up until a couple months later and I had never told him about my experience with it. The weirdest part is that he even told me that it wasn't the acid placing that vision in his head. He felt terrified like this thing was actually looking at him. I haven't had any bad experiences in around 6 months and actually feel really good right now. My dad however had an encounter with Anubis. He remembers waking up and watching Anubis walk out of his bathroom, stand at the foot of his bed, and stare him directly in the eyes. He has always been a skeptic but after that experience he has opened up about other things that have happened in his life that he believes to be paranormal. Anyway Teresa our story. Believe it or don't but to my mom and I it's reality. If y'all got any questions or wanna know more LMK and I'll answer. Two nights ago I had a dream where it was standing looking at me in my room. I don't remember seeing its body just head and horns. The classic representation of a windigo, it was kind of surrounded by a red aura. I remember seeing it and not being scared at all you can even say it was if I had known it for a long time. I should mention I have a pet that sleeps in my room with me, 
My priority has always been and always will be to protect her from anything including things in my dreams. I remember something among the lines of please not her, the Wendigo never said anything but also never turned to see her, its focus was in me, as if it never saw her or it wasn't interested, I'm glad, then I woke up. Usually when I have a nightmare I wake up all scared and in shook, not this time. I don't know what to think. Edit, what I saw was something similar to the first Google image search. I should also mention that it's not the first time I see weird humanoid figures in my dreams, but it always changes forms. First it was a skull-like humanoid, then a coated shadow, then a floating skull, and this time is the first time I see a full defined skull with horns. And like I have mentioned before each time it seems like I'm getting more and more comfortable with its presence, as if unconsciously I'm accepting its message, destiny or whatever it bringing for me. When me and my best friend went up to her cabin in the woods we would go smoke a joint and go for a walk in this dirt pathway near her cabin. While we were walking back we kept hearing footsteps behind us. It was pitch black around us except for the flashlight we had plus the flash on our phones. When we would walk faster we could hear the footsteps move faster. We eventually stopped and looked around to see, and both saw a dark mass shape of a man run behind a tree. We had the lights pointed right at it and it was darker than the night sky around it and had no human features besides the shape of a body. We flipped out and both bolted towards her cabin. It freaked us out the entire weekend. We were driving to work one night and as we drove up the road to exit our area we saw what appeared to be a very sickly pale, like almost white, human-like creature that appeared emaciated. It was moving on all fours and unnaturally fast. Me and my husband both saw it and turned to each other to confirm that we both saw the same thing because we were just completely caught off guard. It ran in the opposite direction from where we had to turn, thank goodness. No idea what kind of cryptid they were but I was hiking once, broad daylight and what can only be described as elves or goblins were in the trees barely visible and you would only see a flash of them as they hid behind the trunks and larger branches, but peripherally you could make out hands, faces, and most importantly eyes, constantly watching me as I was hiking. Another, I know what it is by local lore but I dare not say the name in text, but I saw what I'll describe as a skull of a great antlered deer, on a long or tall, 8 to 10 feet tall, black humanoid body in the distance. I maintained a great reverence and respect from a distance. I have seen death, Abaddon. When my grandmother died it stood in my room when it was night. My grandmother was a devoted Christian, it was a dark entity standing in from of my door. I woke up and I was in shock. After I calmed down a bit it spoke to me. It said, we lost the battle for the soul of your grandmother. But I'm sure that your soul will be ours. After that it stayed and looked at me. Finally my brain was working enough to say something back. I said, in the name of Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit I command you, leave me, it responded with, ha ha ha, I know him but who are you? Then I replied, again, in the name of the spotless Lamb, by the authority given by blood of Jesus and the words of his testimony, I command you again, leave me. After that it left me alone with a lot of cursing. That was my first experience with the upper natural world. After this I started taking courses to understand the upper natural world and how to fight the demons that are living there. After this I preached for a lot of people the evangelic of Jesus Christ and I witnessed with my own eyes the Holy Spirit do wonderful things. But I saw with that I saw more demons visited me. But I can handle it now. I know they can't hurt me as long as I stay close to my faith and repent my sins. Hat man. Outside, across my street in front of a lighted church sign that is 12 feet tall. Had to have been 10 feet. I looked out and saw what looked like a huge man standing there, then he walked behind the sign and disappeared. I got my husband to go check it out, and there were no footprints in the fresh snow. Days prior to this, my husband had a friend over who insists he is followed by a demon and that this demon shows up in pictures taken of him. 
OFC the group laughed and began taking pictures, the ones that take hundreds every few seconds, and sure enough, in one photo, there was a huge ass dark figure of a man in a tall hat behind him. Only in the one photo. Also, that week, we heard running up and down our steps on two occasions. Then, after I saw the shadow man outside, it ended. My god, that was a couple of years ago, and I'm so scared now that I probably won't sleep thinking about it. Well, I grew up in a haunted house. There was a huge amount of activity regularly, most constantly was noise and things being thrown or moved. It was a very old house that has seen a lot of death both in the home and the surrounding areas, it was an old mining town. Anyways, I would see things thrown across the room, not just fall but thrown so hard that if it was class it would break and flew from one side of the room to the other. There was also this very large black thing, you could see the shape but there was no definition but looked human shaped. All I know is that it was always angry and would go out of its way to f with you. My friends wouldn't sleep over anymore because of things that happened there. Like a picture lifting away from the wall but still sitting on the hook like someone grabbed the bottom of it and made it swing back and forth, but it was like it was almost horizontal, it's not something an earthquake could cause without destroying the entire home. Oh and there was an old woman who watched over the children, she was seen by multiple people. She looked like she was in her nightgown and had a sleep cap on. I remember her being kind, but it was still scary. I could go on, there are so many stories. Actually saw a ball lightning as a kid, really close. I was on the right hand of the back seat of our car and looked ahead as we were slightly going uphill on a normal road of some small town. It came straight down towards us, but on the sidewalk, rolling. The insides of it were a wild mix of what some marbles look like inside and the inside of certain jellyfish, all the while shooting short blue rays of electricity in all directions. When it was about where I was, it took a sharp turn away into the yard between houses and I lost sight of it. Later in life, to you f us at once. I was standing awkwardly at my window, wanting to try out my dad's, tobacco, pipe and saw two very bright blinking lights towards the horizon, motionless, and assumed they were stars. This repeated over the next couple hours. They just caught my eye when I went smoking at the window as they were in my direct line of sight. Hours later, I went to smoke once more and as I look at the stars, both of them started taking off, the left one to the left, at the speed of what a regular plane would go, but quickly disappeared behind my window frame. The right one, though, was what convinced me it was actually UFOs. Not only that they stood still all these hours, then both take off at the same time, but the right one was just blasting off, leaving a trail behind. I watched it slack jawed going all the way across the sky. We don't have aircraft that could go at that speed or hover in the same spot for hours on end. I get visits from invisible folks sometimes. I see the air bend around them, it's so bad, it startles me when one steps towards me. I've dodged to the side because of it before. There's smaller ones, too, who love to run all over sofas and stuff, almost like a riled up dog. I suppose the pitch black orb that was sharply flying a curve around my head before it disappeared in the wall was related. Two of them were frolicking through our backyard like giant apes. Actually, I heard them approach loudly from the neighbor's yard, one came swinging through the tree, the other I guess scaled the fence. Then rummaging through our bushes in absolute silence when they came the last few yards towards me. Then the awful feeling as if something sucked on my neck like two fleshy tubes. Around that time, it felt like the entire city was losing its mind. A drinking buddy at the bar was mentioning it too, unrelated, wondering what the heck was happening with people. Guess we'll never know, but I had the weirdest rashes at that time that still bother me after all these years. That was a surreal time 2013-14. A few more things, but I'll leave it at that. When I was younger, about 12 years ago, my little sister and I had bunk beds in our very tiny bedroom in my grandmother's creepy basement. The size of this room can only really be compared to the size of a walk-in closet. I had the top bunk, my sister had the bottom but she hardly ever slept in the room, she would always sleep with my mom in her bedroom next door. 
I was a scared child so I always slept with the TV on for light and a little bit of sound. One night it was just me in the room, sleeping on my top bunk when I woke up randomly in the middle of the night. The TV had been turned off by someone or something but in the darkness I could clearly see, standing in the middle of this tiny room, only a couple of feet away from me, was a man. I didn't recognize him at all, but he was there, in my room, clear as day. He was a heavier man dressed in a short sleeve floral Hawaiian pattern shirt and a pair of light brown shorts. I remember thinking that was weird because it was the dead of winter in central Utah, no one in their right mind would be dressed like that during that time of year. I stared at him and he stared at me. All of the sudden he started to move his hand across his face and do that thing where he'd change his facial expression every time his hand would pass his face. I watched him, in complete bewilderment myself, as he continued doing this for a few seconds before I shut my eyes tightly and covered myself with my blanket. I didn't feel like he was there to hurt me or scare me, but lord was I terrified just from seeing a stranger in my room in the middle of the night. When I mustered the courage to look out for my blanket again he was gone despite me never hearing the door open or shut or hearing any movement at all. This is not my only paranormal experience, it's just the only one where I actually saw someone. Other times have just been shadows or noises or poltergeist activity. OMG so. Let's start with shapeshifters, which describe everything I'm about to say. First a walking cat-like figure which cloaked in front of me. Then a small white shiny cherub type extraterrestrial. Shadow people coming out of portals. A dark being with a slender body almost the form of an ant's, curviness yet skinny, with large white angelic wings. I've seen people being printed of teleported or light beamed in via things like a large mushroom looking thing, light night zaps and large white light movement, respective order. I've seen triangle helicopters, green super skinny people, dark oblong people, and most of it caught on camera. This is what life is like being named Yadidia, friend of God. Growing up in my old place, I always felt a presence in and around the bathroom. Anywhere else in the house felt fine majority of the time. As a four to five year old I was frequently spooked during the night and got into my parents' bed, for reasons I'm still unclear about. Whenever I'd be laying in my parents' bed, laying there awake, trying to calm down, get comfy, go to sleep, etc. I'd always start watching a cluster of floating orbs gratefully appear out of thin air. Shapes, stars, swirls, squares, triangles, would float in and out of a space, sort of like a galaxy screensaver on a big screen, but without being able to see the device projecting it, so to speak. Lil me would drift off to sleep, never actually seeing it dissipate or travel anywhere because I'd be asleep before that happened. Another time at my grandparents' house, around that same age of four to five, Spending the night w my two older brothers because dad traveled for work and mum did night shifts in a casino safe. I was walking down the hallway to go into the lounge room when I've looked into the smaller spare room, we slept in a larger spare bedroom because that one became storage, and seemed like I don't know, 15 to 20 shadow figures dancing on all four corners of the room. Like tribal ritual type dancing. Never seen it again since. Back at old home. We got the bathroom renovated back in 2019 because needed the upgrade. I was 25 years old. One day during construction, the tradesmen had gone on their lunch break. Two had gone to get McDonald's while the others sat outside and ate, had a cigarette, etc. I was using my sewing machine, working on a project when I felt the need to look up toward the direction of the bathroom. I seen a 7 feet tall shadow figure staring at me. When he realized I clocked him, he casually bent his tall ass through the doorway and back into the bathroom. Knowing it was just me in the house for the next 40-ish minutes, I got up and walked into the bathroom. Surely enough, no one was in there and I could see the tradies smoking out by. Their cars, chatting away. I thought for a second it could have been the main plumber we hired for the job because he's six foot something, but not quite tall enough to need to bend through a doorway. I also didn't hear anyone come inside because the front door was slightly noisy and the heavy steps of steel cap boots would have made that apparent, but there was no noise.
When my fiancé and I were lying in my bed, before we moved in together, we were looking out the window. It was about 1 in the morning or so and we were just chatting about the stars. I lived on a farm where there was very little light pollution and the only thing in the distance was cornfields, a couple barns, and if you look really close you could make out the airport. We decided that it was finally time to wind down and go to sleep, but instead of closing our eyes to actually try and fall asleep, we continued to look at the stars but didn't say anything. All of a sudden, I saw a giant, red, fluffy looking fireball in the sky above the airport. I thought my fiancé was asleep so I didn't say anything. I just stared at it. It was moving but completely stationary, like it stayed in one place but it looked like it was sparking? Like a 4th of July sparkler except it was massive and hovering above the airport in the distance. It was so clear. It eventually just disappeared. I just lied there motionless with my mouth hanging open trying to work out what I saw, when I hear fiancé whisper did you see that? What the f was that and I flipped over and started geeking out. We spent the next hour talking about it and google searching anything similar. I didn't sleep very well that night. We still bring it up every once in a while, but nothing ever came of it, and it never happened again. For me, it was a spectral dog that hangs around the road that I lived on a few years ago. It's well known to the locals as haunting that end of the road and there are two types of encounters. Either it appears as a warning of an impending accident, and has often prevented a few, or it shows up after the accident has occurred. Typically described as a large shaggy white dog with glowing red eyes, seen at a distance in the nearby farmer's fields. It wasn't so far away from me. Wife and I were driving home from a long day trip into DC and we were both knackered. We were trying our best to keep each other awake. Her talking to keep my mind going, and I talking to her to keep her awake so she could keep me awake. We had turned onto the road and had a mile and a half to go before we were home when my wife screamed look out. Just as I saw something candid, white, large and shaggy run in front of the car. I slammed on the brakes and swerved but it was too close and we were moving too fast to avoid it. I pulled over to look for the dog that I had to have hit and found nothing. No blood, no fur, no injured dog, no damage to the bumper. Nothing. We gave up looking and drive home. The adrenaline surge kept us going until we got home and for an hour passed that before we were ready to finally go to bed told a co-worker about the encounter and that's when she told me about the spectral dog and that I likely ran into that. I've seen and experienced multiple things in my house, as have my grandparents, and so has my mom. When I was younger, around 9 or 10 years old, I had a big closet, and I used to have my office in there. One day, I walked into my room, and my closet door was open with the light on and there was a little blonde girl sitting in the chair with the scariest look on her face. I ran screaming to my parents' room, and my dad ran to my room but saw nothing. When my sister and I were younger, I was around 9 and she was around 6 or 7 at the time, we were sleeping over at our grandparents on a mattress on the living room floor when I felt like something was watching us. I looked over to the opposing wall where the nightlight, the only light source on in the house, and they're on a dead-end road so no cars going by, and I saw a shadow figure walk by clear as day. I got my sister's attention and told her not to make a sound. We watched five more walk by from left to right. She hid under the blanket, and I watched three more walk back from right to left before doing the same thing. There have been many shadow figures. I've had stare downs with two and only had the courage to run at one, where it disappeared into thin air. I've also seen things peeking their heads out around corners and doors, etc. In the same house where I saw the shadow figures walk by, my mom grew up in that house and saw a Native American walk by in the front lawn and disappear behind a tree. Paint cans got launched off a shelf in the basement directly below her room in the middle of the night, waking her up. Her radio or stereo system randomly stopped playing music when she was studying and just said her complete name, then paused and went back to playing music. A ball of gold light entered her room then just disappeared. In our current house, she's seen shadow figures, and I'll mention that I saw a shadow person in the basement last week, and she will say she has too, and what day it was, being the same day I saw it. 
She woke up the morning after being given an old Native American smoking pipe, we have a lot of antiques, to something crushing her chest and pinning her arms, but she said in the name of Jesus and it immediately went away. She's had many more weird dreams and encounters she says she can't tell me until the right time, whatever that means. I think I've forgotten some things, but those are probably the weirdest or most notable ones. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe for daily stories. We at Horror Den of Misfits really enjoy this, and your support would be appreciated.